Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation with Polonia Vorsovar. So, thought we'd start off just quickly checking out uh, Mikhail Zubek to start off the day in style. Um, bit dubious about putting him in, a uh, bit Zubekius about putting him in in that first match, but I think he performed well. And he's had to play a fair amount since, as you can see from his form down here, though. Last five games, average rating of 7.3. He's actually been really, really solid for us, the young 20-year-old. And that's taken a bit of a load off my mind uh, because it shows that he can do a job at this level. That's really, really important. Bartos will be the Charles Xavier to your young prospects in this save. Um, I certainly hope it's going to be that way. He's definitely still keeping around in the team for the moment, and that's for sure. And hopefully he can impart some of his wisdom onto all the youngsters on this team and tell them all about the total football. Tell them all about Bruno Ball and the success that it's been so far. This Polonia Vosova team must be full of shithouses considering the amount of red cards the other teams get. They do seem to get a lot of red cards against us and I think that comes down to the fact that we control the possession so much and just knock it around. Teams get, seem to just get frustrated. I mean, we got a red card in our first match of the season as well and uh, actually we got one in the second match as well. So yeah, it does seem that we're particularly good at drawing fouls which might get us a few more injuries over the course of the season though. I was desperate to see a Hungarian save before you started it but you've certainly made the right choice. I was very, I was a bit worried when I saw the vote, in all honesty, because it was so close. And I was worried that all the people that wanted the other team would just be like, nah, I don't want to watch it. And that kind of sucks no matter what I did. But I kind of feel like Poland and Polonia was definitely the right choice in the end. Because it's been a long time since I've had such excitement about getting into a save and just playing the matches, like regardless of what's happening. I think we've got something really, really good with the tactic and the players and everything's just looking really nice right now. So some new players have joined the club. I am going to show you those before we play, uh, show you the four off camera games. We're coming back today for a game against, I actually can't remember who we're playing. Photo Hygiene. We're playing the pharmacy, lads. So I'll quickly show the new boys now. Sad news is I didn't manage to get that guy that played for Bayern Munich. Uh, unfortunately, he, uh, yeah, they accepted the bid and everything of 90 grand, but he he was not having any of that talking to us. I think moving from Bayern Munich's second side down to the Polish third tier is probably a bit of a stretch, but hey, they seemed up for it to begin with, and it was listed as a player that would be interested in joining. So I thought, why, why not go for it? So the first player that's coming is Robert Ojog, who has come in, of course, from Krakowia. We seem to have most of their reserves now playing for us. Main reason I brought him in, uh, backup midfielder, obviously, uh, nice to have, but also he's uh, an under-21 player and he counts as part of that quota, so we can put him in and around the team and he can do a job, sort of, um, if we need to. He counts as an under-21, so we've got a bit more flexibility there, which is the main reason I brought him in, and as far as I can tell, uh, they're paying all his wages. Same can be said for Wojciech Swamka, who's come in from, I think it was Visla. Yeah, he's coming from Visla Krakow. He is a right-sided midfielder to back up that wing even more with Malek and Cavalciani and Rezian, so we've got lots of options in that one. Um weirdly, and I physically cannot explain this one in my head, he doesn't count as part of the under-21. He's 20 years old. I, I don't understand. He's trained in Poland. He's been... He, how could he not count as an under-21 player? It, it doesn't make any sense to me. He's been in Poland his entire career, and he's 20 years old. So he doesn't count as part of our quota for some magic reason. Then more backups. Another guy that also counts for the quota, but he's not a bad sort of backup potential player for that uh, right back slot with his seven crossing. Piotr Kozachowski, uh, Kozachowski rather. Again, solid player. Brought him in. Really cheap wages. I'm just build, building the squad up a little bit. So we've got plenty of options this year if injuries do strike. Also, there's Karol Jakšić. Mainly went after him because he can play both uh, right back and right wing. And that's great for us. And he also has eight crossing, ten dribbling too. So when he plays at right back, his defensive stats aren't brilliant. It's fair to say, but he is six foot one, so I think he can make he can do a decent job in either of those positions, and he counts towards the quota. So again, it gives us more backup. Nice. And finally, Arthur Hebda, um, I brought him in. Now he isn't one of these guys I brought in for the for the quota. I brought him in because I genuinely think he could have a good future with us. He's got 14 passing and 12 vision, good first touch already. He's only five foot nine, so he's quite a short player. He's not really there yet, but he's he's got a long way to improve from what my scouts reckon. He's cost us £18,000, but I think that's a pretty solid deal considering they wanted 30 before, and his value was already higher than that, I think. So I think it's a solid deal versus the first tra actual signing we've made that's cost us any money. But they write, my scouts rated him at 93 because I think of him wanting to leave the club he was at. I think it's because they got relegated or something. But I've picked him up anyway, brought him into the fold, and it's just yet more bodies for that backup. Look at the amount of options we've got in the midfield that can all do a job in there. I I'm really, really pleased with that. Right, off-camera games, and then we're coming back for today's game. So first up, we we're away at Odra, and we, we went and won again. A 2-0 victory in this match. Now, they did get a red card very early on, two bookings, and that's what I'm saying, two red cards in our first two games against us. But we were actually really solid, created some good chances in this match. Pichara gave us the lead before half time. A shot was initially saved off of Vishnevsky's header, but he managed to drop it back to, I think, Jan Peltz, who put it across the box, and there was Pichara sliding in to make it 1-0 with his third goal of the season already. Pichara has been off to an absolute flyer this season. We then added a second in the 70th minute. Pichara just rolling the ball to Mateo. 
Mateusz Malik, and he smashed it home for 2-0. We then got a penalty in second half stoppage time, which Pichara missed. He had the chance to get four goals in his first two matches, but unfortunately, he couldn't quite get it over the line. It's his first penalty miss for the club. 3-0 would have been nicer, but we just dominated this match, and it is fantastic to watch. And then we came back home against one of the sides currently towards the top end of our league, and we thumped them 3-0. This is ridiculous. Three matches, three wins, no goals conceded. Defensively, outrageously good in this match. Um, just stopping everything. They took the, uh, We took the lead, rather, through Vishniewski. The ball was rolled into him, and he's just bent one in true Vishniewski style into the bottom corner, give us the lead. A thunderous strike. There was a lot of power behind it. We then added a second on 55 minutes. Christian Piacara grabbing another one. He scored in every game so far this season, and he could have had multiple goals. An absolutely wonderful piece of play. Klushka gets the ball, opens the little gap, slides it through, and there's Piacara to smash it in for 2-0 and then the ball headed away from a cross and there was Zavshikrai one touch bang top corner he got a goal and an assist on the night he was absolutely phenomenal in this match a 3-0 victory I think he was man of the match in the end with a 9 point something yeah 9.0 actually looking down there wonderful performance three wins out of three amazing and then unfortunately in our next match away at currently at the time 14th placed Radiomac things took a massive turn for the worse completely almost outside of our control unfortunately they were pretty good on the night but we still created some quality chances you can see that the number of chances Chances overall, half chances and clear cuts in the games we've had have been much better than they used to be. And I don't know why, we just seem to have improved. We took the lead through Gbeck with a wonderful backwards header rolling into the bottom corner to give us a lead. Totally against the run of play at that point. But then when Pichara made it 2-0 to us in the 59th minute, the fact that he scored yet another one, that's all four games in which he's scored this season. Uh, he's really off to an absolute flyer this year. He's been fantastic. I, I didn't think he could cut it at this level, but he's actually better. And I thought that's kind of the game wrapped up for us. Unfortunately, on 72 minutes, we conceded our first goal of the season. So it it took like 360 minutes for someone to actually score a goal against us this year and it was Makovsky that got it uh, and then this happened. I cannot believe what happened here. This is probably one of the most ridiculous pieces of goalkeeping I've seen for a very long time on FM. The ball is just rolled back by Zubek. Like, just simple stuff. The goalkeeper takes an absurd touch and then just stands there and waits for Leandro to come flying in and put the ball in the back of the net for Radiomac. I, I don't understand why that happened. I don't understand why the goalkeeper didn't get a mistake leading to a goal. I mean, for crying out loud, that is just absurd. It's like the game is literally just giving your opponent a goal. It's it's frustrating as all hell. And so we dropped points for the first time this year and conceded twice when we really, I don't know, they, they did deserve some chances, but to concede like that was frustrating as all hell. And then Malik also got injured in this match, which really did not help. But then thankfully we were able to rectify things and go and win 2-1 at home against Griff. And this was a really good performance again. Probably could have had more goals in this one. They were fifth in the league. Griff were fifth coming into this match. And we have made them look very ordinary. Uh, we took the lead through a Christian Piacara penalty. He finally did score a pen. He's one for two this season, which isn't too bad. But he's now scored, as far as I can tell, in every single league game that we've played this season. And that is something else for him. Uh, just a phenomenal player for us at the moment. He's top scorer in the league with six in five. Unfortunately, they did equalise us. Miazgovski, uh, the ball was whipped in and he just rose highest. He battled with our three defenders and was able to get that. It was bad defending from our defenders. They just should have won the header there and marked him up. And I thought, oh God, it's going to be one of those games. Because they were playing a 4-4-2. But look how well we played against the team that played a 4-4-2. Just by turning off those that one instruction and just letting them do what they want there was so much more freedom against them and we were able to really break them down then thankfully we were able to go find the winner Zavazakrai received the ball dropped it around the corner for the substitute Martin Klushka and he's just absolutely rocketed one into the top corner to give us a win that's four wins out of five what a start to the season I genuinely don't can't believe how well we've started this year. We're unbeaten. Uh, not the only unbeaten team. There are a few other ones. But looking at the other teams that came up, Motor, they came up. Radunia came up. And I believe the other one was Photo Hygiene. We've started phenomenally. 13 points on the board. We're two points clear of dropping out of the promotion spots. And six points clear of dropping out of the playoff spots. What a start. But today, we're away at one of the struggling sides in the league. Uh, this should be a complete, simple victory. But you don't know. As for the team lineup, the problem is... Um, Pichara got an injury in the last match. He's, he's going to be fine, but he's going to miss today's game. And obviously, the games are quite close together at the moment, so it's been a bit of a problem for us. So we will have to take a look at this team and rearrange. It looks like they're going to play a 4-2-3-1, but with that giant gap in the midfield, which is very, very nice, because it gives us... People like Zavshakrai will have complete free reign in that area. And he's done well against... I think it was that 3-0 game where we had that same system against us. So, yeah. So let's just take a little gander at this. Pichara, he cannot start this match. Uh, luckily, Gora exists. And that's a very nice player to bring in. Swamka did not impress me in the one game he started so far. So I'm going to bring back in Kvantaliani, um until Malik's fit again, which is going to be a while yet, as you can see. Six to seven weeks, uh, which is a frustrating one. I've just put him in the team like a ninny. There we go. Uh, so that's two of them in the team. That's fine. Uh, is Yajiak back fit? Mm, 
just about. I just trust him a little bit more than Yakshik. Actually, no. I think I will keep Yakshik in the team right now. I think he's deserved it. At the back, we don't need uh, Zubek in the team at the moment because we've got uh, Yakshik and Pelts in the team, which is good. Kolbon's back fit, although he did have that red card, unfortunately, which is a bit silly of him. Uh, Kocinevsky, is Zemborowski back fit again? No, he's not. He picked up an injury in training, I think, and is going to miss four to six weeks as well. Um, so, for the most part, people have been all right. Zavshikrai is a looking a little bit on the knackered side, though, and I do wonder if perhaps this could be a day for someone like Mateo Santos to come in and give himself a try. Um, so, Ojog is definitely going to come onto the bench. I'm going to put Zmuda on there as well. That will. Oh, no, we don't need a goalkeeper, do we, really? I'm going to put Hebda on the bench, too. Because he could do a job for us off the bench. Right, so, yeah, what tactic are they playing? Yeah, it's this type of system. So there's going to be space for us in this midfield area. We'll hope to exploit that. I see no reason why we can't pick up where we left off. We are favourites for a reason. This is actually, in theory, one of the easier games, considering it's one against one of the teams that came up with us. But we are away from home, and we've still been a little bit iffy on the road. Um, the, one point, the points we've dropped this season were against a team away from home, albeit, and as you can see, a team that are still in the relegation places, to give you an idea of what happened there. That is my concern. A few players brought into the team that wouldn't normally be in it. I'm worried about what they're going to perform like. Vishnevsky's into the space. Oh, that's classic him. Those sort of positions. With that shield, I do wonder if maybe going wider could work. Yakshik, ball across, cleared away. Oh, space. Vishnevsky again. And he's put it in off the post. Bartosz Vishnevsky, edge of the area, makes it 1-0 to Polonia. We've not been brilliant so far, mostly long-range strikes, but sometimes when you've got a player like Bartosz Wisniewski that can pull that type of strike out, then brilliant. Uh, this is really nice work from Santos, just to knock the ball down to him. Actually, I think it was really good because it's a first-time ball into that space. Bad goalkeeping, and Wisniewski scored another one. 1-0, one come on. And, oh no, Jan Pelt is getting sent off after 35 minutes. Jan, mate. Alex, you've got some explaining to do, mate. Your, your boy's just got sent off. Um, I guess Klushka's coming on, and then move them into the centre. God damn. That's not what we needed at all. Ton of all the space on the edge of the box for Rabba. Slips it through for... Oh, bends it around the post. Okay, this is going to be a tough one. I don't really want to change shape because I know for a fact that what we do still works when we're down to 10 men like this. Um, but I'm a bit concerned. I think we just kind of have to go out and throw caution to the wind here. At the end of the day, if we turn this... If, if we win this match from this position of being 1-0 up but down to 10 men, then I will consider this a really, really strong performance from the lads, uh, regardless of what we actually do in the second half. You know, And that wouldn't be with games in hand against us either. Oh, he's going to square this, isn't he? What a save from Tobias. Yeah, the chances are going to come if we just got to hang on. Kvitolani is a player that might come on, maybe? Come off, rather. Oh, he's through. He's gone all the way in. Vishnevsky's hit the post. Gora's on the rebound, and we're 2-0 up with 10 mound now. Mateusz Gora, wonderful work. Vishnevsky should have done better, though. He has to be scoring that first-time strike there. This is wonderful uh, from Kvitoliani. Picks the ball up on the right, just runs at their defenders. They don't close him down enough. Goes past one, slips it through to Vishnevsky. So, lovely little finish, and the... <laughs> The goalkeeper's put it on a plate for Mateusz Gora. We're 2-0 up here. Yes, lads. Come on. I'm very confused. Photo Hygienia have... They have 10 players on the pitch. Is this a glitch or something? Because this is a bit dodgy if this is a glitch. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's like they brought off a player who was injured, but then didn't bring on a substitute for him. And then they made another substitution and the game's like missing to... I don't know. I, I don't understand what's going on. It's like they didn't bring on a player because they didn't have enough players for the certain position or something. I, I don't get it. Really weird. Hebda smashes it at the goal. Gora on the rebound and he's offside anyway. There's not really a lot I can do about this, but it is unfortunate that they've been put in this position because I feel like they would maybe be playing better if they had the right number of players. Flicks away to the edge of the box. Hebda's bringing it through. Oh, oh he's in. It's 3-0. Nico Cavataliani makes it with his first goal of the season. We're 3-0 up here away at Photo Hygienia. I'm still a bit perturbed at the fact that they've... The game has basically made them go down to 10 men for no apparent reason. Uh, so that's clearly a glitch, which is a shame. But that doesn't, to me, feel like a database thing. That feels like a game glitch. Uh, it's 3-0 to us now. Uh, Kvitaliani's actually had a really solid performance tonight. Bringing it forward for him. They're going to have some space at the back post. And he's surely in here for a goal. And he's put it in the back of the net. Uh, Lesniewski makes it 3-1. Uh, probably a bit late for that now, but still. Uh, that will sort of do. Oh, Gora's in. Can he find another goal? Will he square it? He's going all the way through himself and it's cleared away. We should be 4-1 up, really. We've created some good chances with 10 men, considering. Watch out for that ball into the channel. He's done well to cover it. Oh, no, he hasn't. No, he hasn't at all. What a save from Tobias. He's absolutely kept us in the game there. Vishniewski. Here we go. 10 seconds to go. Sips it through for Hebda. Ah, oh, nearly. Long ball and that will do it, surely. Uh, they've got it. There we go. So we've won 3-1. I don't know what happened with their down to 10 men -ness. It, it looks to me like there's a glitch a glitch occurred where when their player got injured, they brought a guy off, but it's like the game didn't register them bringing it off for some reason. And as a result, they didn't get another substitute. That's a shame. I feel a bit hard done. Like th that's a bit unfair on them and it totally is, but there's not really a lot I can do with that. Unfortunately, I'd be pissed if that was me, but you know, we can't do anything. I can't replay the game uh, because if I restart it, 
I'll lose all the games I just played because I haven't actually saved it since the end of the last episode. Um, and I'm not doing that. So we're just going to have to accept that as a piece of good fortune that has gone our way and later down the line when something dodgy happens against us, the goalkeeper goal, perhaps. Um, or something much worse, then I'll refer me back to that, shall we? So next video, uh, I feel like a double, double header. Uh, a game, yeah, we'll do Rook. Oh, no, hang on, wait. Uh... Rook is slightly higher up, so yeah. Okay, so we'll go. We'll do off camera against Pogon uh, Siditsa, and then we'll come back and do Rook and Stomil in a double header to see if we can keep this lovely run at the start of the season going. We have now conceded in all of our last three matches after getting three clean sheets in our first three, so we do need to step that, stop that one. But we have scored at least two goals in every single league game so far, and Piacara will be back soon, so that's good. Hopefully, there's no more weird glitches. Has anyone else seen that happen before? Because if you have, then do let me know. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode and the fact that we're playing some sensational football and starting off the season with some lovely wins, then drop a like on the video. That'd be fantastic. And if you are new to the channel, then uh, yeah, subscribe. That'd be awesome as well. And I'll see you guys in the next episode for a double header, double livecom, beautiful stuff. So thank you for watching. Bye bye.